to another video. I feel like this is a long awaited one. And that is answering all questions surrounded around me being Mormon. So growing up Mormon, being Mormon in Ireland and just all the nitty gritty questions that you guys have. I feel like every few months I rotate kind of through the same question that people have. People are always shocked that I grew up Mormon in Northern Ireland. People always think that it's only like an American religion. And I feel like if I just answer the majority of the most commonly asked questions I get here on a YouTube video, then I can just direct all the people to TikTok over here. And that way I don't have to constantly answer all of the same questions because as much fun as it is, it's not my most favorite topic to talk about a because I feel like I'm not very knowledgeable on it and b I just feel like there's a lot of negativity associated around it and I just don't like to have a lot of that negativity associated with me. So before I answer the questions I wanted to give a little bit of backstory about how my family ended up being Mormon and yeah and then I'll get into the questions. So I am born and raised in Northern Ireland. I did live in America for a few years but I was Mormon before then. A lot of people seem to think I became Mormon once I met my husband that, but that is not the case. So um, my grandparents, so my dad's parents actually converted to Mormonism. We actually don't really use the term Mormonism anymore or Mormon. We refer to ourselves as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints but that's a bit of a mouthful in my opinion and people just know us as Mormons so I just I just use the term even though Mormons don't like when we call ourselves Mormons but my grandparents converted to the church when they had just freshly been married maybe it was a few years um, I can't remember the full story actually that's a lie I just remember it now I said that but I'm not going to share all the ins and outs of their story because that is their story to share um, but they met with the missionaries who are basically people who go around like teaching people about the church. So they were meeting with them and I guess it resonated with them. I believe it resonated with my granda first and then my grandmother took a little bit longer and then it resonated with her as well. And they became one of the first original, I want to say like eight members in like the Derry, London Derry area. And so they were the beginning members of the church here in Derry. So ultimately then that means my dad grew up Mormon. My mum, however, grew up Protestant. That's also a big question I always get, wondering whether she was Catholic or Protestant. She grew up Protestant, but honestly didn't really love it. She didn't really care for it, but she just went because she pretty much had to. Um, and then I can't remember what age she was, maybe like 17 or 18, she met my dad at a club I don't know if it was a club or like a disco whatever they did back in the day they started dating and then my dad went on a mission himself and while my dad was on a mission my mom then also took lessons from the missionaries here and she converted as well and then ultimately I grew up and was born and raised Mormon that's kind of the story about how I grew up Mormon um, there are not a lot of Mormons here in Northern Ireland. In Derry specifically, we have like one church building and there's probably on a good day, 60 people that go and probably 20 of those are, honestly, maybe 30 of those are related to me in some way. But enough of the backstory, let's get on into the questions that you guys asked. The first one, and I get this all the time and I, find it funny and I think people ask it to me now as they know it's funny but I always get asked are you a Catholic Mormon or a Protestant Mormon and I I wish I actually resonated either way because I feel like it's so hard because I don't resonate with like the Irish flag or the UK flag I don't feel like a loyalty to one or other and I kind of wish I did honestly part of me would say more British I have a British passport but then when I'm outside of the UK, like I would always say I'm Irish. Like if an American asked me, I'd always say I'm Irish. My brother ran for Ireland. So like we supported Ireland in that way. I'm going to get an Irish passport. So honestly, I don't really align either way. Um, I know that is a funny question, but I actually wish I had an answer because I feel like it would make my life a little bit easier. What was it like growing up in Northern Ireland where there aren't m that many Mormons? Like, what was school like? So, I feel like primary school, 
I don't feel like it matters what your religion are. I did go to a mixed school. Now, in my area, there's Catholic schools and mixed schools, but the mixed schools are predominantly Protestant because all the Catholics are going to Catholic school. But they are not Protestant schools, they are mixed schools. So my primary school was heavy in Protestants. But honestly, at that age, I feel like religion isn't really a thing. We are Christian, so like when we took RE classes, it was all a lot of the same stuff. Um, luckily, I did grow up with a girl that was Mormon in my year at school. I do feel like that helped. And she also went to secondary school with me. But I do feel like secondary school is a bit harder, but that's just harder in general. People love any excuse to make fun of you. So if there's anything remotely different about you, you're gonna get made fun of, at least in the school I went to. I did go to a mixed secondary school, like it was 50-50 Protestant and Catholic. And I did go to a grammar school as well. That's relevant, but I feel like it might be. Um, but yeah, like I got made fun of for having big eyes. So then like being Mormon, not everybody made fun of me, but if somebody was going to make fun of me, they were going to use that. You know, they would make up stupid lies or things they'd heard, like my dad has six wives, you know, that kind of thing. It's like very predictable, very roll your eyes. Um, but all in all, in a day to day, I can't say my life was any different, regardless of being Mormon or being Protestant or Catholic or whatever. Yeah, I it's all I know. And my friends just didn't really care. And I didn't really care. It wasn't a huge part of my personality, to be honest. It wasn't something I shouted from the rooftops. Yeah. I just kind of try to blend in. Another question revolving around friends asking like, did I ever feel left out with not many Mormon friends? And I really didn't. Um, my friends, my friends are mostly mixed, like some half Protestant, half Catholic. I had a couple whose parents might've been one or either, but they themselves were like not practicing. But I just feel like because I'm Christian and they're Christian, we actually have a lot of similarities. And I really never found an issue with making friends. I feel like religion is not, as teenagers, religion is like not the thing that like draws you to people. So I just, I can't say I ever experienced being left out because of my religion. Yeah, I really didn't. And maybe that was just the group of friends that I chose and it just was irrelevant. But yeah. A lot of people are asking what kind of schools did I attend, Catholic or Protestant, which I explained I always went to mixed schools. People are asking, do we celebrate Christmas? And I feel like a lot of people don't know or don't think that Mormons are Christians, but we are. Literally the name of our church is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So like Jesus Christ is the main center point, the main focus. So yes, we are Christian. Yes, we are Christians, and yes, we celebrate Christmas. This is a good one. Are you allowed to go out to bars or clubs, or would you just avoid them as you don't drink alcohol? I feel like this would be so different if you ask someone from Utah, California, Arizona. In Northern Ireland, I feel like a lot of people here aren't as strict. Now, that's not true. There are some people, but I did not grow up in a crazy strict household. So yes, I did go to bars and clubs. I think the church would teach you it is better to avoid those situations because ultimately going to a bar and club is leading you to temptation. Staying at home or like doing something more wholesome is not. But I just feel like in Northern Ireland, it's pretty hard to avoid going to the bar and club. It is so ingrained in our nature, especially growing up. It's where literally all my friends went every single weekend. Um, so if I didn't go, I would have been very left out. But what I did was I was the designated driver, which actually made my friends like me more because it meant we didn't have to worry about getting taxis. None of them had to not drink. Um, and yeah, actually having me as a designated driver made my friends not like me more, but you know what I mean? So it was actually kind of a good thing in that sense. Can you live together without getting married? Is it frowned upon having kids before marriage? No, you can't live together before getting married. And yes, it is frowned upon having kids before marriage. One of the big things in our church is like no sex before marriage. So you, if you live together, you couldn't be an active member of the church. You can still go to church every single week. I feel like that's the easiest way I can explain that. Another question is, have you ever been to other churches or is that frowned upon? Um, I should state that everything I'm saying is like my own experience. 
um, church culture is very different than church teachings and I feel like I come from a culture that's more lackadaisy. I have been to other churches, I was part of like girl guides so we would do things at like the local Protestant church and I think with school I went to like a bunch of different churches once so I guess you can go to other churches. Um, I'm sure they wouldn't recommend you every week going to another church but you most definitely can go and visit other churches. Is it a rule that the girls have to have long hair? I think some other religions have that too. Um, and the answer to that is no, there is no rules on like our hair or anything like that. I know a lot of people seem to get Mormons confused with polygamists or like um, Jehovah's Witnesses or brethren. And no, we don't have to have long hair. We can have whatever kind of hair we want. Can a man have several wives? No, they cannot. Do you think my husband could handle more than me? Hell no, he could not. How was it trying to navigate the Protestant Catholic divide in Northern Ireland as someone who was neither? Um, I feel like I was really oblivious to this in primary school and in secondary school. I feel like there wasn't a divide in the school that I went to because everyone was mixed and yeah I just didn't take sides. I would go to St Patrick's parades with my Catholic friends or I'd go to the 12th of July with my Protestant friends. I dated people from either side. I had friends from either side. I can't say I really navigated the divide because I feel like where I went to school the divide wasn't as big as you maybe think it would be. This is probably the best question. It made me laugh so hard but they want to know is soaking a real thing? And I don't really want to explain what it is. So if you don't know what it is, go watch TikTok and like type in soaking or like Mormon soaking. Yeah, and I really don't know. Um, I personally did not do it. I don't know anyone that did it, but I know when I was at BYU, it was something that I had heard about through the grapevines, but I'd never actually known anyone that does it. But I'm sure the people that are crazy did do it. Like, I'm sure there are people, BYU is just crazy. Yeah, I have some crazy stories about BYU, but I feel like I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest that people actually did it and felt okay about doing it. Another one is, what was attending BYU like as an international student? I feel like I could do a whole video about BYU because honestly, I didn't love it. Now I feel like I am not the perfect candidate for BYU and so that was probably the reason why. Um, I don't think it made a difference that I was international. Maybe it did. Um, I just feel like I grew up in such a different culture than is BYU. BYU is Utah. It's in a Utah bubble. People have never left Utah. They don't know what life is like outside of Mormonism. They don't know how to live in the real world like they get offended when someone swears and it's like I went to school and everybody was swearing like you that's just a part of life I don't personally swear unless I'm really mad but like I don't know people in Utah are just <sighs> people in Utah are just crazy not all of them but yeah I I didn't love BYU but I just feel like I was not a Molly Mormon is what they call them which is someone who's just like the church is everything. They eat, breathe. The church, they will be friends with someone who's not up to the standards that they are. And I just, I'm like, no. Because I know a lot of people who are very good Mormons, but are very shizzy people. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I feel like a lot of Utah Mormons are. They keep all the rules of Mormonism, but they don't keep the rules of like Christianity. Like, they are not kind. They don't speak kind about people. They'll see somebody on the road on a street with a crop top and short shorts and call them a slut. Not to their face, but behind their back. Whereas I'm like, I don't think Jesus would want us to be calling people on the streets sluts and judging them for what they're wearing or what their job is. But that's what a lot of Utah Mormons are like. They basically keep the rules, but then don't keep the rules that matter. Like they don't drink tea and coffee. They don't um, eat fast food on the Sunday, but then they just, talk negatively about people if that makes sense and I just don't resonate with that kind of person. I would rather eat out on a Sunday or drink tea and coffee and speak nicely about people and treat people nicely 
Does that make sense? I feel like I'm going off in a ramble because I have a certain few people in my mind and I'm saying these things. <laughs> so yeah, I did not, I was not the right fit for BYU. I was not the right fit for Utah culture or those kind of Utah Mormons, to be honest. Is there anything you and your husband disagreed on in raising your children Mormon? And honestly, off the top of my head, I don't think so. We're very aligned on our religious stance. I feel like we're both at the same spirituality level, which is always really important. I feel like if you're with someone who's super religious and you're kind of on the lower end, that to me would be really hard. Um, and I feel like we're kind of in the middle. I wouldn't feel like I'm super, super religious, um, like not like my parents would be, but I also feel like I am religious. Yeah, I just feel like I'm in the middle of the road and I feel like Trent is the same and I feel like we're raising our kids. We want to raise our kids the same way. And I feel like that's really important regardless of your religion or if you're different religions, I feel like you've got to be on the same page in that sense. Oh, another hot topic, because I did a video talk about it, is why can't we drink tea and coffee? How did you grow up in Northern Ireland if you don't drink tea and coffee? How did you survive? And first of all, I hate tea and coffee. Have I tried them? Yes, I have. I tried coffee one time and it was absolutely vile. And I knew it was going to be because I hate the smell. I tried tea as like a teenager. Uh, my friend made it and I thought it was disgusting. I, I don't know if I've tried it since. I might have tried it one time since and I still thought it was absolutely vile. So that part does not bother me. And living in Northern Ireland, I just didn't like tea. So when someone asked me, did I want a cup of tea? I just genuinely, I don't want a cup of tea. So the answer was easily for me. No, it didn't make me feel awkward. I never felt awkward, honestly, because the real reason I didn't drink tea is because I didn't like it. I didn't have to be like, oh, I'm Mormon, I can't have tea. It was just straight up, I don't like it, so no. And honestly, nobody ever asked. No one ever questioned it. And not that I can remember anyway. And why can we not have tea and coffee? I honestly do think it's a very stupid rule, in my opinion, because Mormons are allowed to drink energy drinks. And I feel like it doesn't make any sense that we can drink energy drinks and not drink tea and coffee. I wouldn't be surprised if that rule disappeared in the next 10 plus years. Um, like I said, I'm not the most knowledgeable, but these rules were made a long time ago. And it was kind of a word of wisdom, which is basically a guidance on like healthy eating. So we're recommended not to drink I mean, not to drink alcohol, not to smoke, basically addictive substances and tea and coffee are seen as an addic addictive substance. And so something that we are supposed to avoid, which I kind of do see that like I people are addicted to coffee, but then I also think people are addicted to energy drinks. So I feel like if we're going to say no to tea and coffee, I do think we should also be saying no to energy drinks. Um, and people are asking, is it like tea? Is it herbal tea? Can you have non-caffeinated? It's nothing to do with the caffeine which is funny because I think that's the addictive substance because we are allowed caffeinated soda, but some Mormons will not drink caffeinated soda because they feel like the reason we can't have tea and coffee is because of caffeine. I feel like that's so confusing. The church itself is not confusing, but the culture, the people make it very confusing. Um, so yeah, some people won't. I think you can have like herbal teas and you can have hot chocolate. Um, yeah, you can have herbal teas. I just don't love hot drinks. So this is not like a topic that I've delved into and like read a lot of material on because I don't like it. So I don't really care. It's like not one thing in the church that really bothers me. There maybe is other things that I struggle with, but tea and coffee is not one of those. I'm trying to see if there are any more questions. Okay, I think all of the other questions are just very similar variations or just other rude comments, which is very typical when you make a Mormon video. Maybe I will get those on here, but I feel like the YouTube comments are not as like notorious as the TikTok ones. Um, but yeah, if you do have any more questions, I definitely would be happy to answer them. I could do that on TikTok or over here. I do want to just say this is my personal experience. Everybody is so, so different. And I feel like the culture in Northern Ireland is just so different from Utah. I feel like if Trent answered these, he would probably answer these totally differently. And I guess my last closing statement with this topic is 
it doesn't cost anything to be kind. I get so, so many negative comments every time I post anything about being Mormon, which is so frustrating to me because I, I would never comment on someone else's religion saying negative things about their religion. There are negative aspects to every religion and I am not blind to that. I'm not blind to the fact that there are negative aspects to my religion. There are very negative people associated with my religion. There are very negative people I have met who are active Mormons and I don't personally love that. But at the end of the day, I'm more focused on like my journey and I'm not really focused on the nitty gritty random things. I think at the end of the day, that will all be sorted out and I don't really need to worry about it. And I think what's most important here is to be a good person. I hope this video does not come off as preachy. I'm not trying to convert any of you. I do think at the end of the day, being a good person is what's going to matter most in the end, whether you believe in an end or not. And I think it's fun to learn about other people's religions, to be open-minded to other people's religions or lack of religion and just people's way of life. Um, you know, we all grew up so differently. We all live so differently. And I think we can all be happy and live harmoniously. <laughs> I feel like that got a little preachy for a second, but yeah. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed, you should do that. If you have any ideas of other videos you would like to see, of other questions you have, leave those in the comments below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And hopefully this didn't turn you off me, but if it didn't, I will see you next time. Bye.